I hope the SIG doesn't fly into orbit. My venerable Variac has been lurking in the background of the past few videos, but I think it's about time to get it back in the spotlight. The switch broke courtesy of the TSA, and I haven't gotten around to fixing it. Guess I better get on with it. I'm positive I've taken this thing apart before, but can't remember when, and I definitely did not make a video about it. First time for everything. One screw. Two screws. Little tight on slack, but very well labeled in here. One is neutral. Two is line. Three is output. Four and five are unused extra taps. I'll pull all these loose just so I have some room to work in here. Pretty cool example of they don't make them like they used to. Solder terminals on the switch and the fuse may have had a partial rebuild well before my time. These brightly colored connections don't quite match the rest of the unit. First gonna get the old switch out of here because that's certainly broken. Loosen the nut. And the switch pulls right out. New switch uses quarter inch spade terminals and not solder lugs, so I'll be adding some to the original wiring. Gonna trim a tiny bit more, like that. Give it the tug test. The new switch doesn't have any markings about which way is on or off, despite coming with not one, but two copies of the product information. Easy enough to find out with the meter on continuity mode. No beep. That way's on, that way's off. It also has this notch here towards the offside. I believe that's standardized. Ah, now this is something I was worried about. Switch terminal interfering with the fuse terminal. Easy enough to put a slight bend on here for clearance. Slightly better, but not quite. And that'll clear. A tab on the enclosure here engages with the slot on the switch, so it can only go in the right way. Now that would be interesting if the thread pitch has changed since this thing was built. Nothing obviously wrong with the threads. This nut just doesn't want to go more than about one turn. I chase the threads with this nut. This one's perfectly fine. Trying it on the old switch, and it too binds up right at the start. Very interesting. Close up side by side, the threads are different. Another first for me. Don't have to be super tight, just tight enough. A little bit of a challenge, but everything should fit. Just as it was before. I'm going to pop this back together. Moment of truth, plugging in. And three, two, one, don't blow up. No magic smoke, that's a good sign. Power on. As I crank that up, voltage will rise. Unity with the line. Looks like it'll top out at 145. Looks good to me. Main problem solved, but I gotta know, what do those extra taps do? Let's find out. Power is now on. Got neutral there. Line in. That's the wiper. Four, that's the end of the winding. So the nominal 140 volt. And what is five way over here by neutral? And that's a nominal 24 volt. Very interesting. Didn't know it could do that. Of course, there's technically other options such as 120 between those two, 97 between those, or another 23. 24 between here. Lots of combinations. For sake of being thorough, I'm gonna pull the shell off the toroid transformer. First gotta take off the set screw for the knob. Got a little Allen head in there. Not that size. That did it. 330 seconds. A little bit of loosen. There is no key there, so the knob can be adjusted to exactly match the scale. Next are the three screws here along the bottom. Now this should slide right off, like that. Popping off this shield assembly should reveal the brush. 
the brush rides along the exposed tops of the windings, allowing an infinitely variable transformer. However, the brush is the weakest part of the assembly and can sustain damage from currents that the rest of the transformer could shrug off due to its thermal mass. Current from the brush passes through this slip ring contact to the center tap output. Pretty dirty in there, so that's due for a cleaning too. Three 30 seconds Allen key takes these set screws loose. Oh, that's interesting. The shaft is now loose, but this assembly is not. The secret lies beneath, and it's got a little C-clip in here. That's what's holding the whole assembly together. Don't have pegs of the right size. That's fun. One round of Dremel-powered tool modification later. I hope the SIG doesn't fly into orbit. <laughs> well, that was exactly what I didn't want to happen, but it didn't fly too far. And get the shaft out. Looks like I just need to pull this piece of insulation off if that will cooperate. The entire assembly is now moving and that slides right out. It's really not too bad in here, just needs a bit of cleaning. Gently wiping and brushing with the dry paper towel at first just to get anything loose off. There's a tiny amount of grease on the slip ring here. Not sure what type. Q-tips are quite useful in cases like this to really get in there. If you're enjoying my antics, drop a like to help more people find this video, and consider subscribing if you haven't yet. More info, links to my socials, and ways to support the channel can be found in the description below. Using a tiny bit of rubbing alcohol on another clean Q-tip just to get the contact surfaces for the brush clean. can tell the areas are getting cleaner when they stop dirtying the q-tip immediately. This range in the mid to upper area of the scale has gotten a lot more use than the lower end. Q-tips are now coming back pretty clean. I didn't want to take a closer look at this spot right here. It looks different and it even feels different. There's a very slight roughness right there. Got a gentle non-scratch scrub pad and I'm just going to very, very lightly give that area a hit to see what that does. Still slightly rough, but that's smoothing it out. Getting better, but I can feel the roughness right here. Isopropyl Q-tip again. Looks like it did take a little bit of damage to that rough spot. Bit of arcing between the brush and the winding goes to reinforce how the brush and winding interface is the weakest link of the whole unit. This might be the best I can do, but it's much better than before. Slip ring's not quite so bad, but it gets the same treatment. Same thing for the slip ring contact. Brush gets a quick clean as well. This is all cosmetic, but the rest of the unit gets a quick wipe down. Getting conflicting information on this, but there was grease to start with, so I'm just going to put the tiniest, thinnest layer of grease I can manage onto the slip ring here. Slide this back in, insulation ring, snaps down over there, and now for the clip, with the tool hopefully modified slightly further so it doesn't let go and fly off into orbit again. That's how it's supposed to happen. That feels good. Shaft. Shaft must be adjusted so it's not sticking out through the bottom. Locking it down with the set screw before it can move again. And getting the second set screw. Now to put the rest of the covers back on. Need to adjust the screw so it's not dragging on the center shaft. Nice and solid now. Triple checking the terminals are tight. That got twisted around.
nice and solid. For reinstalling the knob, I'll make sure it's all the way to one stop. There's zero. Then put the knob on and align the pointer. Then before it can go anywhere, get those set screws tightened. There are two of them. One of them was just loose when I took it apart. Oh, not quite. That shifted slightly. That's now a little bit below zero. Tiny adjustment. Why is that shifting? That's better. Sanity check the other end of the scale. It's not gonna be exact, or can just put it somewhere in between. Tiny hair further up, cause technically zero is about third of a volt, half of a volt. Try the other end of the scale. That's better. Make sure both of these are fully tightened. Much smoother to turn the dial now. Cleaning did it some good. Oh hey, guess what? I forgot something. Now I gotta do this all again. Woohoo! Not completely all again. This part comes off independently of the terminal box. There, brush shield. Looks good, feels good. No leftover parts this time. As a final step of the cleaning, I'm going to quickly scrub the prongs on the plug with an abrasive pad just to clear off any dirt and oxidation. Nice and shiny now. Comparing that to the other side. Harder to get there, but can't forget the inner side of the prongs. Ground prong two for good measure. That's ready to go. Behold, a load test. Right to left, we have input voltage, input current, output voltage, output current, variac under test, my ballast control box from several videos ago that runs a loop for the amp clamp on the output side, fan with independent power supply for extra airflow, and the space heater as the dummy load. Power on, fan on, heater to fan, heater to step one, step two, step three. Now can start bringing up the variac. Heater is working. Sagged a little bit on the input side as expected. 8.84 .8 amps, just over 100 volts in the output. 10.02, 10.03, about as close as I can make it. Gonna let it run for a little bit, make sure nothing gets too hot. Fuse holder is getting a little bit warm. As expected, it's running at its essentially rated current. You can see this part of the winding is working the hardest. Still holding pretty well, though that poor fuse is the hottest thing in the whole system, aside from the heater element. No complaints at all from the Variac coil. Auto shutdown is quite handy, but also quite troublesome sometimes. Fuse is still climbing, but it's slowed down a bit. Half hour in, have to reset the secondary camera. Synchronization clap. Fuse has largely stabilized in temp. Windings are still slowly heating. But Secondary camera decided its battery was about dead. Though I think I've seen what I need to see. Pretty warm fuse, but it's holding. Windings nowhere close to what would make me worry. Yeah, that's toasty. Back this down. Just in time for all of the auto power off warnings to start beeping again. Fuse didn't blow and nothing else got mad at me. Variac is a go. Well, that was fun. Got my Variac back in action just in time for some upcoming projects, so keep an eye out. Until then, YouTube thinks you'll like some of these. Thanks for watching.